What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Major Report. I'm your host, Paolo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, uh, some recent news, Brian, that has gotten me very interested in the possibility of seeing Chris Hemsworth once again reprise the role as Thor. We already know that the last outing was an, uh, I'll probably use this word a lot, atrocity. Um, that even the guys at the end of the movie, when we saw it, we were like, where he's coming back. And I'm pretty sure when they saw it, they didn't even know that they were coming back for another one. And now we hear word that what his name is Gareth. What's his name? Gareth, Gareth Edwards, who is the creator and director of the creator. A movie that I saw a few weeks ago and I was just, uh, I was in the movie. I was in this world. I was in that experience that he created and watching the behind the scenes and how this movie was made was inspirational. Is this a confirmed? uh... No, this is, so this reportedly, and Gareth Edwards, by the way, his credits are very interesting and tied to this discussion. So not just the creator, which is a visually ridiculous movie if you haven't seen it like for 86 million dollar budget i i don't know how he did it to be quite honest but that's kind of that's kind of his bag right so this is most notably in disney lore the guy who directed rogue one and then sort of didn't make it to the finish line tony gilroy picked it up and finished it but gareth edwards was the titular director of that movie he also directed godzilla in 2014 very successful, uh, profitable relaunch of that franchise, and then directed a very small movie called Monsters, which uh, was kind of what got him the, the gig in the first place. But the rumor is that Marvel is looking for a darker-toned Thor 5 and that he is the top choice to take the seat. Got to admit, that got me interested. <laughs> because if nothing else, the movie's going to look like something. Yes. In this guy's hands. Yes. And if Disney's cutting budgets because they can't rely on the box office, this guy knows how to make a lot with a little. Yeah. So I yeah. am intrigued. In. I'm in. I'm in. I'm intrigued. I'm in. Because this guy did something that... I, I'll tell you how he did it, Brian. He shot this movie, uh, The Creator, with a few FX3s. Um, uh, a small crew. Everything was shot on location. Some um, green screen was involved, but very little. They edited and finished the film. Then they put the VFX on top of it. So, yeah. And that movie from beginning to end had me uh, very entertained, Brian, and and it was very thought-provoking. Thor requires those elements outside of the, the the ridiculousness and goofiness that we got from Taika Waititi and Thor Love and Thunder. And Chris Hemsworth just tagging along, thinking that he's this funny man. No. Which, which admittedly, Chris Hemsworth himself has kind of disowned at this point. I mean, pretty much everyone associated yeah. with Love and Thunder has disowned the movie. From Taika yeah. to, to, to Hemsworth and... Um, by the way, Hem, do you see the Furiosa trailer? Hemsworth no, flexing. I have not. Oh, check that out. The Mad yeah. Max prequel with Anya Taylor Joy as Charlize Theron's character from Fury Road. And Hem, Hemsworth looks, he, I think he's the villain. Chris Hemsworth? Chris Hemsworth is the villain in this movie. Yeah. Okay. He He's doing some interesting stuff in that trailer. It'll, it'll remind right. you that he has some range. Okay. Um, so yeah, this 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 at least got me into the thing of look, it, it Gareth Edwards, as we said with the Rogue One experience, there is a little risk here, but he does come with the pedigree of some of the things Marvel really needs. They need a movie that looks great. They need a director that has enough visual chops that he can work with the post production crew to avoid some of the mishaps. They need a guy who can work on small budgets, and Gareth Edwards doesn't do silly. There is no silly in any of his work. So if you're trying to pivot to something that is thoughtful and dark and brooding, yeah, he can do that. 
I love a movie that has humor, not sitting. There's a difference. If you're Chris Hemsworth, who has shown some hesitancy in wanting to come back, does, are you excited? I would say yes, because this is still your money-making role. I mean, Hemsworth, like I said, I just piped him up for the Furiosa trailer. He obviously has extraction, but he's not proven to be this massive, reliable, bankable movie star outside of Marvel. He needs Marvel. He knows that. Yeah. And so I think the opportunity to find range again and reinvent the character again would be appealing to him. Now, I have a question back to you because we know how Love and Thunder technically left off, which was this introduction to a fairly goofy world of the Olympians and the gods with Zeus and with Brett Goldstein as Hercules. If Edwards takes over, do you think any of that remains in Thor's no. I say, I don't give a damn about that stuff. And I'm sure many people out there don't give about it. Don't give a damn about it either. I don't want to hear no screaming cows. They were entertaining though. But I don't want to see none of that. If we're going to go into Thor 5, let's get that... Uh, that emotion that Thor, Thor is dealing with, has, he still hasn't dealt with what he's lost. So if we're going to go somewhere, let's see if Gareth Edwards can deliver that emotion that, that, that this character so desperately needs to get away from the goofiness that we got. Let me ask you another question, because this movie probably wouldn't come out for a number of several years yet may even probably in their minds come out after secret wars if they're still intending to do that what are the odds chris hemsworth is allowed to be thor for thor 5 right because why is that well if the goal is to limit budgets chris hemsworth would be expensive at this point for that role what are the odds I, Gareth Edwards has enough pull with the studio to say, you know what? It's 2027 that we're aiming for. I'll do it. But I need to be able to start something fresh. And that includes having my own Thor. What are the odds? I don't think that happens because I think Chris Hemsworth still. Big enough star to kind of be <laughs> worth it. Yes. Okay. Um, I tend to agree with you, but I want to ask the question because yeah, yeah. at some point that's going to happen. Of course. Of course. And, and one of these franchises, they're going to try it. And it's just a question of with who. I mean, I guess you could argue they've done it with Anthony Mackie technically as Captain America, but that's different. He he came in in the original franchise and said, I'm talking about someone who enters as the titular character taking over the role directly, right? Anthony Mackie didn't become Steve Rogers. He's still Sam Wilson. Mm -hmm. It's someone yeah. coming in and taking the role directly from one of the predecessors. And they, because we'll talk about it in the, in the series. This, is ex this would be exactly what Kevin Feige is talking about with Marvel being analogous to James Bond, if they did it. I think, I still think that uh, Hemsworth wants to go out on a higher note than he did. And so I think he'll, I don't think it'll be about money. I think it'll be about quality. Um, he'll get, he'll get enough money to, you know, I mean, I, he'll do it for the fans and he'll do it under the right conditions, similar to, I don't think it'll be that crazy with, uh, as with Tom Holland. Uh, but uh, Chris Hemsworth will come back at the opportunity to for, for redemption. I, mean, I tend to agree. I would probably say there's like a 90 plus percent chance <coughs> that Thor 5 stars Chris Hemsworth still and, and if Gareth Edwards is directing. But yeah. at some, I, just, I think the question is at least starting to be in play and you kind of have to ask like where where is Marvel going to try it first? You know, they obviously, you know, they didn't try it with Black Panther. And I totally understand why they didn't do it. But I mean, they were, you know, they obviously had an opportunity to go that route, chose the one they did, you know. But at some point, we are going to see Steve Rogers. At some point, we are going to see Tony Stark. We're going to see those characters again. And it'll be with Tony Stark. 
You think that's the first one? I think so. That's the biggest one right there. Unless they, I mean, certainly we hear the rumors of them bringing those guys back, but it's like, yo, then what happens after that? Right? I'm going to say it's actually Steve Rogers. I was thinking that too, but Chris Evans, that dude is like Benjamin Buttons, yo. He's going to look like the same thing in 10 years, yo. You think he's not going to do it? If it's a, if it's a good... If we start all over after Secret Wars, we got to know what happens after Secret Wars. After Secret Wars, we'll determine what, what's next. I think it is gonna, it's probably going to be a full replacement of everybody after Secret Wars, I think. The, the reason why I say that is I think a lot of these things are linked and the fortunes are linked here. I could see a scenario if Brave New World is not successful. And there are rumors that it has not been successful so far. And if Superman Legacy hits a grand slam, Marvel's closest answer to that is Steve Rogers. And I think that will be, it will make for an interesting discussion as to whether they need Steve Rogers holding the shield in 2028. And, and that... Yeah. 2027 and I just that's what makes me wonder and I just I don't know that I can't see Chris Evans signing up to be a French to be a whole franchise guy again I can definitely see him taking a check to do one last hurrah with his people yeah. he's not the new Steve Rogers that's why I, and I just think no. I, but I don't think he would get in the way I, I just he's not that kind of guy like I don't think he would be like oh what's this like no I think he would bless whoever whoever it was so I, I if I'm laying odds I think Steve Rogers would be the first recast reborn original cycle avenger that we see brought back i already said who i would cast anyway oh you want um basso right from night agent yeah gabriel basso the other question i'd be interested in if they do this is would this allow for the resolution of the end of loki the series the one obvious thing that was left out there is do Thor and Loki finally get to face each other one, even for a scene, even for a five, you know, almost like Mav and Ice in Top Gun Maverick. Do we get one last goodbye between the two brothers? I mean, that could be pretty powerful the way it's set up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mentioned that in, in, in our Loki episodes that you need to do that. You need to do it and make it as epic as, po as possible with Chris Hemsworth believes his brother is gone. I also, and to see him, that's... I will say, the idea of Loki God of Stories preserving free will in the universe and his brother discovering that it's his brother, Loki, who's preserving free will in the universe feels a lot more Gareth Edwards to me than... Thor and Hercules on some kind of buddy adventure or rival adventure. Because mm -hmm. think about that is a mind bending, just interesting idea that like you're Thor, God of Thunder, and you discover that the new engine for free will in the universe is actually Loki at the end of time. And like what, what, what how that would make you feel the quest to figure that out and then what you would do about it. It right there is kind of an interesting story. Yeah, man, we. I, I think that moment needs to be seen on TV, uh, on screen, and uh, it almost it would almost be like Neo meeting the architect, like that kind of conversation. You, you got to, you got to have. Uh, it's just too much history not to have that happen, right? You got to see that on screen one last time. Uh, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this. Um, I think with this possibility, uh, Chris Hemsworth would be on his path um, towards redemption of the Thor character because we can, come on. Nobody can sit here and say that Thor Love and Thunder was a great movie. Fact, and, and, and I'm sorry, there's many of people out there that love Thor Ragnarok, but that was, that's part of the train. That movie comes out now, that's garbage. Well, Taika admitted publicly he did he did it solely for the money. For the check. Credit for saying I actually. get it. 
I, I, yeah, man. I, I get it. I get it. You, I get it. But it just shows you that I'd rather get somebody who's really invested in these characters, not in, you know what I'm saying? And not in someone's talent to make a movie. Certainly that's, that's, uh, uh, a skill that, that that's required, but also that love of the character and of the, of the story and the universe. That's also another thing that I, I think uh, I would need in a director or someone that's going to take on that responsibility should have. Right. Um, so yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this possibility. Does it give you some? some interesting ideas of what could possibly be and what do you think of the idea of seeing Loki and 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 Thor once again on screen together reunited it's going to be amazing if that was happening we'll see you next time on the Ninja Report the show goes on yeah!